Hello, welcome to the Word of Hope podcast. We believe it is the Word of God that changes and strengthens our lives in such a way that we are able to effectively fulfill our assignment and manifest heaven right here on earth. It is our goal to lead you to a place of confidence and hope as you help others progress and elevate. Thanks for tuning in. Now, let's prepare our hearts for today's message. place that name has gotten me out of some things hallelujah hallelujah even this morning that name has gotten me out of some things hallelujah hallelujah I can be in a desert I call on the name of Jesus he's my water hallelujah he's everything that I need to fulfill and sustain me so even if you ain't excited about it I'm excited about the name of Jesus come on let's say it one time when I call in the praise. You're worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. I tell you what, before we get started, come on, lift your hands up high. Declare it out loud with me. My pores are closed to this virus. My pores are closed to this virus. My pores, I said, are closed to this virus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To all of our guests, if you're visiting with us uh, today, can you just kind of just wave at us if you're visiting? Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Can we give God some praise for all of our visitors? Do you just like, well, I kind of like, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it looks like I have about 27 minutes to really make this happen. So let me go into what I call Anna's favorite part of the service. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's see. We're going to go with this one first. Amen. It's called going to church instead of fishing. A boy came late to Sunday school knowing he was usually very on time. His teacher said, Johnny, is there anything wrong? He says, no, ma'am, not really. She says, well, why are you late? He said, I was about to go fishing, but my daddy told me that I needed to get on up and go to church instead. The teacher was very impressed with the father's response and asked Johnny if his father had explained to him why it was more important to go to church than to go fishing. He said, yes, ma'am, he did. She said, what did he say? And Johnny said, my daddy said that he didn't have enough bait for the both of us. (laughs) This is called the eulogy. After dying in a car crash, three friends go to heaven for orientation. And they will all ask the same question. When you are in the casket, friends and family are going to be mourning over you. What do you want to hear them say about you? The first guy immediately responded and said, I would like to hear them say that I'm one of the greatest doctors of my time and I'm a great man. The second guy says, I would like to hear him say how I'm an excellent father and a wonderful husband and a school teacher who made a huge difference in our children's tomorrow. The last guy thinks for a minute. He shouts out loud and he says, I like to hear them say, look, he's moving. (laughs) That was a pretty good one right there. I like that one. I I, I, want to hear that, too. I'm just reading what's on there. All right. Here we go. This is called the wrong email sent. This is my last one. In Minneapolis, a couple decided to go to Florida to throw out during a particularly icy winter. They, play, they planned to stay at the same hotel that they spent their honeymoon 20 years. 
They plan to stay at the same hotel where they spent their, 20 year, their honeymoon 20 years earlier. Because of their he hectic schedules, it was difficult for the co couple to coordinate their travel plans. So the husband left Minnesota and flew to Florida on Thursday while his wife planned to fly down the following day. The husband checked into the hotel, and there was a, commu a computer in his room. So he decided to send an email to his wife. However, he accidentally left out one letter of the email address. And he sent the email without realizing the error. Meanwhile, somewhere in Houston, a widow had just returned home from her husband's funeral. He was a Baptist minister who was called home to glory following a heart attack. The widow decided to check her email, expecting condolence message from her family and friends. But after reading her very first email, she screamed and fainted and fell out on the floor. The widow's son rushed into the room and found his mother on the floor and asked mother what is wrong. She, in a frantic state, pointing towards the computer screen, which read, To my loving wife, subject, I've arrived today, says, I know you're surprised to hear from me. They have computers here now, and you are allowed to send emails to your loved ones. Since I've just arrived, I thought I would send you an email. Everything has been prepared for your arrival tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing you then. Hope your journey is as eventful as mine. And P.S., it sure is freaking hot down here. That was a good Come on, that was a good Give God some praise. That was a good one. Hey, hey what, you, what you would have done, you just saw the email. Glory to God. Thank you so much, our musicians, our praise team. We want to thank you again, Attorney Joel Porter. And that ballot number is 71. Amen. I think 77. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I guess we made rhymes for everybody else to help you remember. Joel Porter's rhyme is, glory to God. If you believe in heaven, vote for 77. Glory to God. <laughs> I mean, that, you, I, I can't, I, this stuff just flow. I'm not making this stuff up. Glory to God. Just flow. It's just anointed to do it. All right. All right. Isaiah, uh, glory to God. Let's put up on the screen our message for today. Uh, we've been teaching on this series entitled Intentional Growth, and it has been remarkable. And our message today is the attitude of honor in the atmosphere of heaven. Now, we, we, last Sunday, we talked about measuring maturity. How can I measure maturity? There were specific elements of how we can measure maturity. I apologize. Let me declare the word of God over my life. There's a grace that is on my life to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ and to cause all men to see it. Amen. There are, there are particularly specific elements that we can use to measure. Amen. Glory to God. That we can measure our growth. We can measure our maturity. Amen. Come on, say I need to measure it. Amen. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. Write it down and watch what it says on the screen. Read it with me and it reads. For as the rain cometh down, they are just in the sound. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not there, but waters the earth and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Notice what it does. It make it bring forth. It make it grow. Rain come down from the atmosphere above, the clouds above, the heavens above, waters the earth, and it makes stuff grow. Watch what it says in verse 11. Amen. Glory to God. This is our foundation scripture, so we know all about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 11. Coming up now. How we, and it says, so, so shall my word be. Come on, say the word is like that. Now, remember, the rain comes from the clouds. It waters the earth, makes stuff grow. I said the rain comes down from the clouds. It waters the earth. It makes stuff grow. The rain comes down from the atmosphere that is over the earth, and the atmosphere that is over the earth releases something in the earth to make stuff grow. And so shall the word be. The word of God over my life, controlling my attitude, is now released over my life to create an atmosphere that makes stuff grow. Look at somebody and say, we making stuff grow around here. I didn't say around here. I said around here. Amen. Glory to God. I didn't say here. I said here. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, look at somebody else and say, we making stuff grow around here. Amen. Glory to God. Just because you're in a bad relationship don't mean it need to stay bad. We making stuff grow around you. Just because you broke now don't mean you need to be broke for the rest of your life. Look at somebody and say, don't get used to it. Used to Amen. It. Glory to God. Don't get used to it. Just because the doctor gave you a bad report don't mean it need to be something you live with. I know they said it run in your family, but I always say if it got legs, run it out your family then. Since it run in the family, run it out. Glory to God. Come on, say we making stuff grow around here. 
something was said last Sunday that stood out to me that, that as I was listening to the message, the Holy Ghost said something in the beginning of it. And it was during the introduction of the message. This is what he said. He said, and it continued to ring in my spirit, but this is what he said. This series of teachings are designed to lead us to a place where we literally provoke growth in our lives. It's to lead us in a place. And the Holy Ghost said this. I don't know if you remember this, but he said, this word will lead you to a place of growth. It won't drag you. That keep ringing in my spirit, that the word of God will lead you. This word we're talking about now, this particular series of messages in Revelation reveal will lead us to a place of growth, but it won't provoke the growth. I mean, it won't it won't drag us to grow. In other words, if you don't want to grow, then you can stay where you're at as far as God is concerned. God is saying, I want to move people forward that want to grow. I know what you're saying, but God, I just want to do better. Why I can't ever get a leg up. Amen. Glory to God. Because God said I can't get a leg in. If you can't get a leg up because you won't let me in your mind, I can't walk through the corridors of your mind and establish my way of doing things. Glory to God. Your attitude won't let you be successful. Your mindset won't let you prosper. Your attitude won't let the marriage be great. Your mindset won't let you operate in ministry. Your attitude is the thing that God is after. Anybody going to be here with me today? Amen. Glory to God. Come on, just touch yourself and say, God, work on my attitude. Amen. Glory to God. So it's important we understand it. So there were two important things so far. We in part six of this message. And there are two important things that stood out so far in this series. The first one was attitudes create atmospheres. We know that whatever attitude you have, it creates an atmosphere. You ever notice how you got hired on a job? You start working at that job. You really love that job. You stood up at church, testified how God bless you with a new job. And you were excited to have the job. And you got around the wrong people on lunch break. And when you start hanging around and they start complaining about the job and their poisonous words got into your mind and began to disrupt your attitude. And now the whole atmosphere at the job don't feel the same. You don't want to go to work. You don't like going to work. You're no longer giving praise for it. And now you complain about your supervisor and everybody else, all because you developed the wrong atmosphere, that crea- attitude that created the wrong atmosphere. Your attitude create atmospheres. I said your attitude create atmosphere. If you're not happy about the things that are going on, you're going to either have to change the things or change the way you think about it. Y'all got quiet on me right there. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And the next thing was the atmosphere is the thing that unlocks potential. The atmosphere is the thing that unlocks potential. That's when we talked about the geostructural uh, satellite. Amen. Glory to God. The thing you're capable of doing is released in the right atmosphere. In other words, I was one of those young men myself. Glory to God. We were riding in Malibu. Glory to God. And uh, my wife and I going through this canyon and there are mountains and the mountains are just getting bigger because we're going down further. And Brittany is just beautiful. And, and my wife said to me, uh, I said, uh, is this what Pepperdine is? Pepperdine? Say and my wife said, is this where what? I said, Pepperdine. And she said, uh, the sign says right there. I said, I didn't know it was in Malibu. She said, how do you even know that college? It's a small college. So we're in Malibu, and we start sharing things, and I start talking. She just turned to me. She said, boy, if you wasn't raised in Hollywood, you could have been anything you wanted to be if you was just raised in a different Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all not going to be with me right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, in case you don't know what Hollywood is, Hollywood is as hood as you can get. (laughs) Amen. So I became a product of my environment. Glory to God. You know, when uh, 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 Attorney Joel Porter was up here talking about taking away the habitual offender and all this other stuff, he was talking about fighting for people that, amen, I was the one he was fighting for. Glory to God. uh, That was me. Amen. Glory. Why you think I stood up at that time? Glory to God. That was me. Amen. Hallelujah. So the the problem was all of this potential for me to be intelligent, for me to be thriving, for me to be adventurous, for me to be an entrepreneur had to be released when I got out of that atmosphere. The best thing that could have happened to me was God getting me out of Hollywood. Oh, glory to God. Y'all got quiet then. Well, maybe you don't know your Hollywood. Maybe your Hollywood was a particular family structure you was raised in where all the aunties had a side man that took care of their bills. And the best thing God could. Y'all got quiet. The ladies don't like to say amen when it's dealing with them. And now when it's time for you to take care of bills, you got somebody on the side that can help you pay your bills. Maybe you come from an environment where all the daddies and the uncles and everybody had, they make statements like this. It's a sad mouse that only got one hole to run in. Glory to God. So you got somebody else on the, y'all ain't never heard. But the best thing God can do is get you out of that environment. 
Maybe you come from an environment where everybody was broke and they, they were okay with being broke. Amen. Poverty was a mindset that was embedded in my entire family. Amen. Glory to God. Everybody was all right with being broke. They were all right with not having anything. But then God raised up a general. Glory to God. They began to pour into me. Glory to God. And as he began to pour into me, my horizon rose. Glory to God. And now I see that my kids will not be broke. Amen. Glory to God. They will not rob Peter to pay Paul. Glory to God. Best thing that could have happened was getting you out of the atmosphere. Amen. And he was able to do that by changing my attitude. So how do I measure maturity? The first tool to measuring maturity, pull that up. Here's the um, first measuring tool. We gave them last week. Now we're going to teach on them. Amen. Measuring tool number one, my consistent attitude towards leadership. If I want to know, Deacon Terrence, if I am mature in the word, I can measure it by my consistent attitude towards leadership. Amen. Not how am I towards leadership, how am I towards leadership consistently? Oh, that's quiet right there. Hallelujah, that's good. Amen. How am I around leadership all the time? Can leadership, because I don't know about you, but it feels good when, you're, when your pastor, when your leader, when your supervisor, when your, when your boss, when your parents, when your, when your spouse is praising you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When they're telling you all the good things you do, but when they have to correct you and when they have to address things, when they get on your nerves, when they do something out of the way, when you get a glimpse of their flesh. Oh, y'all quiet right there. Can I pastor right now? Can you remain consistent? That determines your growth right there. That determines how, because we think we're mature by our tenure in the church. I've been saved for 27 years. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, that don't mean nothing. That just means you are 27 years saved, crawling baby, if you're not mature. Glory. Come on, we're not visiting nowhere else right now. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You can have the gifts of the spirit. I said that last week. You can have discernment and you can prophesy accurately. You can stand in front of somebody and give them a word of knowledge and tell them exactly what's going on in their life. And it does not measure your maturity. Oh, that's a gift of the spirit. All it means that God used you to do something. Oh, that's quiet right there. Amen. So we've become fascinated with gifts and talents till we don't even want to grow up no more. Just because, amen, glory to God. Jazz, raise your hand. Amen, glory to God. You're in the 10th grade. Jazz in the 10th grade. Glory to God. Time moving. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. It just seemed like yesterday you were getting ready to go to high school. And hallelujah. So she's in the 10th grade. And Jazz can draw, y'all. She can draw. She, she has art, creativity. Amen. Glory to God. And do you love her art skills? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All of that loving her skills is fine. That's fine. The art skill, loving that is fine. But it would be a sad thing for Jazz to be able to draw and say, Mama, I don't even want to grow up no more. I think I'm going to stay 10th grade and just draw for the rest of my life. Your talent don't replace you growing up. And just because you can harmonize, sing a note, play a key does not mean you're maturing. I'm trying to stir up a desire in us to say, God, I want to grow up. I want to mature in this thing. I, salvation is not the end of a thing. It's not me getting saved and then God saying, all right, whenever I come back, you're ready to go to heaven now. It is God saying you have now stepped into a flow of something that you need to mature in. Whoo, glory to God. That's good. Amen. Come on, say, Lord, help me grow. So how I respond to leadership consistently will reveal my level of maturity. It's possible for me to be gifted and childish. Amen. 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 Say that again for the people in the back. Glory to God. I think that's what the kids say nowadays. Say it again for the people in the back. I don't know. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's possible for you to be gifted and childish. Amen. Glory to God. So what this series is going to do, it is going to bring you to a place, glory to God, where you're going to get petty ways out of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can, can, I, can, I, can I teach this? Hey, man, I got 10 minutes. How do I got 10 minutes? I can't teach it then. Glory to God. Because, watch this, the petty ways create an attitude that create an atmosphere that all of you can't be unlocked in. 
So now the petty ways create an atmosphere, an attitude that create an atmosphere that keeps stuff locked up in you. So the full potential of you can be released and be petty. I'm getting ready <laughs> to leave you now. Do what y'all want me to do? No. Glory to God. So watch how this works. Watch how this works. Point number one. Point number one. Point number one. It's important that you understand this attitude toward, towards leadership. Watch number one. Amen. Glory to God. It's not on the screen anymore. Amen. Glory to God. So let's pull it. Let's write it down. Write it down. The right atmosphere places a demand on the nature of God in you. Write that down quick. The right atmosphere places a demand on the nature of God in you. The right atmosphere places a demand on the nature of God in you. Come on, say the nature of God in me. We saw that last week that we have the nature of God. Come on, say, I have it. I got it at rebirth. Amen. Glory to God. My spirit has been reborn. And Mr. Felton, I have the deacon Felton. Glory to God. I have the nature of God in me. Come on, say, I got it. I got it. But it's important that I understand that the nature of God, Tiffany, is not released from me with the wrong atmosphere. If I want the nature of God to be released, then I have to have the right atmosphere and the right attitude. That is why we made this statement. It's a very important statement. We made it last week. We said this, that that God, it is easy for God, not easy. God says that we are to love our enemies. And that's an easy scripture until we get enemies. When we get enemies, now that becomes a challenging scripture. And the reason it becomes challenging and God is not going to remove you. God is not going to give you an easier path. Let me just go ahead. There is no easy shortcuts when dealing with God. God is more concerned about your development than he is about your deliverance. He's more concerned about you developing before he gets you out of something. So you can cry all you want. Lord, I want you to, Lord, bring me out of it, Lord God. Bring me out. And God said, I'll get you out of it as soon as I can get that out of you. Getting them out of Egypt was easy. Getting Egypt out of them was the trouble. It took a few plagues to get them out of Egypt, but it took 40 years to get Egypt out of them. And some of it, he couldn't even get Egypt out of them. He just had to let them die off in the wilderness. Because you can't step into the new, the promised land. You can't step into the new thing with Egypt ways. Glory to God. Teach Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he, he, uses, he uses leadership to be one of those things that, create an atti- that, that you have an attitude towards leadership. Here's something that happens with leadership. Because our leaders are anointed. Thank you, all three of you. Amen. Glory to God. I thought the whole church was going to get excited, especially the leaders in the church were going to get excited about that because, the le- because our leaders are anointed. But you, but you have to understand what the anointing is and what it means. The anointing means to smear, but it also means this. It literally means salve. It means an ointment or a balm that is used for healing. Glory to God. So the anointing is something you put on the wounded. So we have leaders that are anointed that only mean that we have leaders that are wounded. And and Brittany, watching the leaders, you would say that's anointed. But the closer you get to leadership, Kennedy, the more you begin to be exposed to the wounds. And God is saying, can you be trusted with honoring leadership? Consistently, even after you see things that don't go with what you thought about. Y'all don't want me to teach today. I'm going to teach it anyway. First lady, it's important that we understand that everybody that want to be around us can't handle being around us. Because being around me gives you access to something that the anointing was only covering. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I need people around me that can see the womb and then in a seed about the womb. My consistent attitude. My consistent attitude. My consistent attitude. Yeah, you're anointed, but you only deal with me by the time we're dealing with the church. Try living with me. Try living with me when my mouth gets smart. Try living with me when I get in my little mood. 
Try living with, glory to God. Amen. I, I love my bishop. Amen. Try living with your bishop then. Glory to God. And you will see wounds. That's why, that's why, that's why I love my wife. She's able to see the wounds in me and still intercede for me. Now I'm just talking about me. I didn't bring you up. I didn't, I didn't come look in your refrigerator to see what you got to drink. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see what you got in your drawer up under the, I mean, at the bottom. I, I, I didn't bring that. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask to look at your call log and your text message. I didn't ask none of that. I'm just talking about wounds. That I'm talking about me, so you should have said amen about me before the Holy Ghost started coming down your street. Look at somebody and say, I have wounds. I have stuff he's working on. That means the anointing is on there. And lead, my consistent attitude towards leadership is me getting a view of the wounds and still honoring leadership. You said something I didn't like. You handled it in a way I didn't like. You did something that made me upset. You frustrated me. You're pressuring me right now. But I am still going to honor. God, this is good. Amen. Write down the second point, number two. Write it down real quick, real quick. Four minutes. I'm not going to make it. All right, here we go. Honor is the attitude that creates the atmosphere of heaven. Honor is that attitude. Honor is that attitude. Come on, say honor is the attitude that creates the atmosphere of heaven. We want to live in a climate that is, Jesus said it this way, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy will be in as it is. Whatever is going on in heaven is supposed to be going on in the earth. Yeah. We're not waiting to go to heaven to start experiencing heaven. We start experiencing heaven on earth. I said we start experiencing heaven on earth. We start, we're agents of change. This is our motto for this church. This is what we are. We are agents of change, period. Amen. Glory to God. We are here to bring an atmosphere of heaven on earth right now. I don't care what was going on before we showed up on Prescott Road. Before we showed up in 70805, I don't care what was going on. We're here now. Yeah. Glory to God. And you got forces of darkness that don't like the fact that we're here. Amen. They try to fight against us. Amen. Glory to God. Rise up against us and everything else, but ain't nobody running from nothing. Amen. Glory to God. We sit on assignment to transform this community. We sit on assignment to beautify the community. We sit on assignment to bring peace to the community. We sit on an assignment to deliver the community. We sit on an assignment to build the community. We sit on assignment to educate the community. We sit on assignment to heal the community. We sit on assignment to the community. Amen. Glory to God. So the atmosphere of heaven don't just show up just because you saved. And you have in church. So on Sundays, Cam, we pile into this place and show up to church. And, and we think that the community is supposed to change. But the atmosphere, in heaven don't, the atmosphere of heaven don't manifest yet because you come to church. Yeah. Glory to God. It ain't going to show up in your house just because you watch the, uh, you, you watch, you the sermon on Facebook Live. It ain't going to show up in your house just because you watch. It's not going to happen that way. Amen. Glory to God. Both. Now, listen to me clearly. Both honor and dishonor are both attitudes that produce or create atmospheres. Right. Right. Write this down somewhere. Write it down. Write it down. Write, write it down. Just like I'm about to say it. Note to self. You got it? Here's your note to self. You ready? Here we go. Avoid people that don't know how to honor. All right now. Now I got to take inventory, Mr. Felton. I got to see the people that are around me in my circle, and I saw a real life. And when they talk about leaders recklessly, Glory to God. When they get to talking reckless and, and everything, I'll I, I be, I be like that meme on, on the, when, when you just slide into the bushes. Amen. Yeah. Or I'll be like, SpongeBob, I think I'm going to head out. Amen. I ain't got no part in this. Why? Because you're creating an atmosphere and something is about to happen in that atmosphere. And I don't want that happening in my life. Come on. Can we, can we teach right now? Amen. Glory to God. It's important that we understand that because a heavenly atmosphere doesn't automatically show up just because you say this is what honors mean. It's not going to pull up on the screen, but I'll go ahead and tell it to you. This is what honor means. It means to be honest, to be fair, to be fair, 
to be fair. See, y'all like for me, y'all like for me to teach, y'all like for me to teach about the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace and you coming out of your fiery situation and God will deliver you. If he don't take the heat out the flame, I mean the fire out of the out of the furnace, he'll take the heat out the flames. You like for me to preach like that. But when I start teaching about simple practical things like being fair. Fair means this. I might not get what I want, but I'm going to give you what I think you need right now or what you deserve right now or what's good for you right now. Come on, look at somebody and say, I got to be fair. That's not my time, and I'm just now getting into the scripture part of it. It means that honor means to be honest, to be fair, and then the next part, and submit it in an attitude of respect. Submit it in an attitude of respect. That's honor. Come on, say honor. honor. It's to be submitted in an attitude of respect. Now, listen what submitted is. Submitted, it means this, Tiffany. It means I don't have to agree with you to submit to it. It just means I want to honor you. You hear me, Pastor Willie? We think that because we don't agree that we got to always, li- listen to me. You don't always have to stand up and speak up just because you don't agree. Oh, Lord, help us grow up. Help us grow up. I know what you're saying. Well, I'm just real. No, you just real rude. You always got to correct everybody. I always got to say, well, I just got, I can't have you going through life like that. I got to tell you. W.E. Vine suggests this. Got to go. W.E. Vine suggests this. This is what honors, he suggests that honors mean this. Honor means this. Listen to what it says. To capture one's members in moments of ambiguity. Now, of course, I'm not digging home of Pastor Oliver or Miss Deborah, so I got to go look at what ambiguity is. <laughs> it means uncertainty. It is to capture, listen to what it says, to capture one's members in moments of uncertainty. Help us, Holy Ghost. Teach Holy Ghost. I'm going to say it again. To capture one's members in moments when you're not sure. Rashad, can I get you for a second? Come here. Come here for a second. Done. Let me get you for a second. Come here for a second. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Brother Dunn is over there. He's using his illustration. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to use uh, uh, baby boy today. Glory to God. This this is what I want you to do. Don is your leader, so you're going to be my emotions, all right? You're going to be my my tongue. You're going to be my mouth. You're going to be my emotions. Amen. Glory to God. I want you, the moment he tell you to do something, I want you to rise up and get ready to walk to him like you're ready to fight. I'm talking about fast, like aggressive, all right? Give it to him, Don. This is what honor is. Honor is, boy. Get off my screen. Boy, <laughs> stressed all my thigh muscles. <laughs> my thighs all hurt. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Do you see me? Whoa, boy, this is an illustration. I ain't playing on digging deep in the ground holding you back. Hallelujah. That's funny, though, but that's how our anger is at times. Hey, Amen. It'll drag you a little bit. You'll be doing everything you can to bite your tongue. Hey, Amen. Glory to God. To hold your words, to keep your emotions in line, and to smile and tell your supervisor, I'll make sure I do that next time. Yeah. Now, on the outside, I look like this. But on the inside, I was like Rashad going crazy. Glory to God. And that's honor. How you are towards leadership is not you feeling good all the time. Is you capturing your mind? I got thoughts that want to run crazy. I got words that want to run crazy. I got attitudes that want to rise up, and I capture that stuff. Done, done, done. Glory to God. I capture it then. Glory to God. I don't let it run crazy. I don't let it drag me around. I don't let it. I I capture every time. Can, 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 Can I say a simple statement? Smart people very rarely get smart. (laughs) 
You want, you want me to prove it? Yeah. Scripture says this here. Don't argue with a fool. Yeah. Lest you be identified with the fool and they can't tell the difference on who the fool. Yeah. That's what the scripture say. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. So now, now his, his smart people say this here. You know what? You're right. I'm not going to work my energy up. I'm not going to work my... I didn't say I was the smartest person. I got a flesh I'm dragging into position too. Glory to God. And sometimes the majority of our day, our emotion, our time, our energy, even our resources get spent on battles that we don't even need to fight. Somebody shout on them. Now watch this. First Peter chapter 2. Pull it up real quick. Real quick. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 2. Watch what it says. Read it with me. Honor all men. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I'll read it for you. This is what it says. All right, here we go. This is what it says. Honor the men that deserve your honor. Honor the people that treat you well. Honor, honor, it's according to who it is. Honor your circle. It said honor all men. Now, we love scriptures, but we... we why do I choose to honor you? Jen, I choose to honor you because I want stuff unlocked in me. It has nothing to do with whether or not you deserve the honor you qualify for it, or you've been living in a way that warrants my honor. No, it means this here. I got an attitude to honor everybody. Glory to God. In other words, I'm not just running around being rude and disrespectful because I could be a bully. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, talk to me. Shout, shout honor. Watch what it said in the, in the CEV. Amen. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17, the CEV. This is what it said. Read it out loud with me. Re no, 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 no. You got to respect your family only. Now, listen, but the same scripture now. Listen what it say now. It said honor all men, but in this translation it say respect and show special love for God's people. This is what it means. In here, I have special love for you. When I step out there, I got respect for everybody. In other words, I'm in covenant with you. I get in the trenches with you. But it don't mean I'm going to get out there and just disrespect people because I got a group of people that I fellowship with on Sundays. My church is not the only church. And I'm not talking about mine as in possession. I'm talking about you. I mean, saying that, well, I, mean, I go to heavenly hope and I'm so heavenly hope. That mindset, I'm so heavenly hope, is, determined, is, is, is dedicated to develop in us a desire to want to do something in our ministry and to take pride in our ministry. I'm so heavenly hope. It's not to push every other ministry to the side and say they're not, they're not some. No, we, we respect all everyone. We respect everyone and we show special love to God's people. Watch the next translation, the Passion Translation. Watch it. Amen. TPT. Come on. Glory to God. Watch what it says. Recognize the value. Hold on, hold on. That means in order to honor Pastor Willie, this is what I got to do. I have to. I have to recognize your value. I can't honor you. If I see you as worthless, I'm going to treat you as. And many times we don't honor people because they don't have something to offer to us. Yeah. Or when they stop giving to us, yeah. then we don't honor them. You know, this even say, well, I mean, you just, why, why, you don't, why, why you didn't like, that's your friend right there. Why you didn't like that? But well, they don't like none of my posts. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, can, I, that, can I bring it to our generation right quick? They stopped liking my posts, so I stopped. What? Yeah. then you're going to have potential in you that continue to be locked up because you desire to get your lick back. All right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. So watch this, Proverbs 12 and 4. Write it down, Proverbs 12 and 4. Watch what it says. Come on, read it with me. It, the integrity and strength of a virtuous wife transform her husband into an honored king. But the wife who disgraces her husband weakens the strength of his identity. It's talking about honor right there. That's the Passion Translation right there. Watch what it says. A wife that desires to honor her husband. Y'all don't want me to teach today. A wife that would capture her members, hold them things back, 
Glory to God. Don't say everything that comes to her tongue. Don't keep every thought that comes to her head. I didn't make this up. It's good to me, though. The integrity and the strength of a wife that know how to honor would transform her husband into an... Can I tell you what it just said, ladies? It just said this here. You teach people how to treat your husband. That's what it just said. You teach people. You don't respect your husband, you don't expect your family to respect them. You don't respect your husband, don't expect your kids to expect, respect them. You don't respect your husband, don't expect your parents to respect them. You teach people how to respect your husband. I didn't make this up. Ooh. I didn't make this up. I didn't make this up. Amen. Glory to God. So watch what it does. It take a husband that don't have, I mean, up under all of this mess, it got some good stuff on the inside. Amen. Glory to God. So I begin to call you what you are, not how you act. I begin to capture my tongue and me honoring you somehow, some way, create an attitude in me that'll create an atmosphere for me to live under. And now it transforms. This don't just work with wives. It work with supervisors. It worked with pastors. It worked with parents. So, 1 Samuel 24 would be my last scripture. Kevin, give me some sauce. 1 Samuel 24, verse 3 through 8. Watch what it says. Jesus, this is good today. Father, release in this place a craving desire to grow in honor. A craving desire to grow in honor. Listen to me. Listen to me clearly. It's the measuring tool. It's the first one, but it's a measuring tool. You don't even know. Let me just read the scripture and we'll point out verse 3. At the place where the road passes, some sheepfold, Saul sent into a cave to go to the bathroom, and this is what happened. David and his men were hiding in the cave. So let me tell you what's going on. David is on the run for his life. Saul, he did nothing to Saul. He did everything for Saul. He's on the run for his life. And Saul is trying to murder David. He's trying to kill him for no reason. He's just hating on the boy. He hates the fact that they celebrate David. And they, the, the women say Saul has killed thousands, but David has killed 10,000. And he just hates the fact that the hand of God is on. Sometimes the people that don't like you is not nothing about you. It's the fact that the hand of God is just on your life. And that's what they don't like amen glory to God sometimes that supervisor got an issue with you only because you're the one with the salve on you glory to God it's not because of anything don't take it so personal that they don't like me no they don't like the anointing that is on your life they don't like the glory that is on your life they don't like the power that is on your life they don't like it they don't like what's going on in your life so David David is on the run and Saul shows up and he's going to use the bathroom, so he go in the cave. His whole army out there now. He go in this cave and watch what happened. Verse, verse, verse four. Dave, now for, Saul walked into the. We back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Saul walks into the cave and David and his men are against the wall like this in the dark, hiding, quiet. The one that's trying to kill David is now brought into the cave by himself. I don't know about you, but if you try to crowd me and you got all your people with you, I might let you get your shine on. But when I catch you by yourself, oh, yeah, 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 you doing all that talking. Then. Yeah, see, David ain't do that. Watch what happened in verse four. David's men whispered to him and said this. Now's your time. 
This is what the Lord, listen what they said. This is what the Lord was talking about when he said, I will deliver your enemies into your hand to do with as you wish. And David crept forward and quietly slid off the bottom of Saul's robe. Now, now we're going, now watch what happened. We're going to the next verse, so watch what happens. This is what happened. David says, he's over there quiet. Saul sneaks in. And there go people that are just as immature, whispering, saying, here go your chance. And they even threw scripture in there and say, this is what the Lord meant. You ever notice that some of the advice people can give you to walk in dishonor sounds so, sounds so, sounds so religious? Amen. But the Lord is telling me, you don't have to take that. I know I'm teaching today. I know it. Amen. Glory to God. For surely God, for surely, all of a sudden they speak in the King James Version in regular conversation. For surely the Lord has empowered you to do your own thing. And before you know it, they done talked you into starting your own church where you lived the next 15 years with four members because you went on them. Watch out for the men in the cave. David cut off a piece of the, the skirt in verse 5 said, but then it grieved him to his heart. It broke his heart. And he said in verse 6, I shouldn't have done it. He said to his men, it's a serious sin to attack God's chosen king in any way. But he's trying to kill you. I don't care what he's trying to do to me. It's breaking my heart. It's amazing to me. How people can act towards one another and go to sleep like a baby. Like a we pray today's message was a blessing to you. If you are interested in partnering with us or supporting with a financial contribution, be sure to visit our website, www.heavenlyhope.church. And remember, it is our God-given assignment to make everywhere we go look more like heaven. Until next time, God bless.